Hey, everybody. Um, so to reiterate, my, uh, the title of my project is uh, Characterizing a Gene Variation that Extends Lifespan in Mice. So uh, by transferring a piece of DNA to some uh, F1 hybrid mice, we actually saw a significant, significant increase in lifespan, which may eventually lead us to some sort of better understanding of what genetic processes are underlying the aging process overall. So to outline my presentation, I'm going to talk about uh, two specific topics. Um, one I call the uh, how I define the genetic architecture of this piece of DNA. So by using statistics, I looked at the lifespan and the genotype of uh, four populations of mice, three of which I'll show you today. And I explained the mode of inheritance, so whether it's dominant or recessive, uh, the effect size, exactly how much longer these mice are living, and then uh, the penetrance of this gene variant. So exactly out of the three populations of mice that I'm going to talk about, how much longer uh, were these mice living, and were we seeing the same effect across carriers of the same genotype? Uh, and then I'm going to talk a little bit about how I extended this analysis uh, through what I learned through my internship at Yale University um, to crack this piece of DNA open and see which genes are inside of this uh, piece of DNA that have been sequenced and then uh, what proteins are coding for and uh, how we use differences in the genetics to uh, see uh, how differences in amino acid uh, sequences could affect the overall catalytic activity of these proteins. So, uh, in yeah. I already talked about this. I use statistics to explain uh, the mode of inheritance, uh, how penetrant it is, and then uh, what the effect size is. So to do this, uh, we developed uh, two strains of mice um, that are congenic for the uh, leg to allele. Um, so what we did was we back-crossed carriers of this gene variation against uh, what are called uh, a recipient strain for 10 generations. So to go back to, I don't know your name yet, but uh, what you were talking about, it would be like look um, crossing uh, Labradors against poodles for 10 generations until you had like a population of dogs that it had uh, all Labrador-like body size and color, um, but they had like the dos like that cleverness that Sean was talking about for, uh, for the poodle. So we did this except for longevity. And then we hybridized them, uh, which is something that hasn't been done yet. Um, most, uh, anyways, I'm not going to get into that. Uh, so as you can see here, um, the carriers of the cast allele at leg two um, lived an average of 11% longer than uh, non-carriers of the cast allele. In a second population, we saw a 12.5% increase. And then in third population, uh, we saw a 6.1% increase. Um, this report is the uh, first confirmation of a, a mammalian allele with a dominant mode of inheritance that uh, significantly regulates lifespan. Um, so to summarize, the mode of inheritance is dominant, uh, penetrance is high because we saw the effect in varying degrees over three different genetic backgrounds, and uh, the effect size was uh, between a 6 and 12 percent increase in lifespan overall. So um, then I cracked open this piece of DNA using genome browsers uh, that are generously financed through uh, the federal government and uh, the EU, and uh, I asked the question, uh, where in the whole genome is uh, leg two, as we call the allele, the cast allele, um, located uh, on a chromosome? What genes are inside of it? So I made a big list. And then by comparing the DNA differences, um, we identified, uh, I identified which genes were the best candidates. So leg two translated to a um, 0 0.025. Translates to 0.025% of the entire genome, or a seven megabase region, seven million base pairs. Um, and inside of it were 32 genes. The genes you're looking at right here are the ones that uh, carried what are called non synonymous polymorphisms. And basically, what those are are uh, nucleotide differences that result in um, a different building block for a protein. 
So it'd be like uh, purchasing a Mopar carburetor over a Ford carburetor, something like that. Or, you know, putting like that injector or whatever. Um, and what I found was that three of these genes contain differences that fell in regions of the sequence that are significantly conserved across multiple mammalian species. So that, that was pretty cool. Um, and uh, after this, uh, I generated a population of mice um, that were of the LP bow background, uh, one of those charts. Uh, and um, they're waiting on the shelf for another student uh, who is ready to, to um, do a gene expression analysis on them to see if they're expressed in varying levels. Um, so I think I was going to get rid of that. Yeah. So yeah. The um. Anyways. Oh, there we go. Here. This is what I was expecting. There. Uh, I'd like to thank my sources of funding: Inbreed, the Maine Space Grant, and then um, the sources of funding through the Jack Summer Program.